Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone's having a fantabulous day. I'm going to put these up because I don't know what I'm doing with them. I called myself getting some new headsets from off of uh did what it was supposed to do anyway um so today i wanted to get on here and i was having a conversation with this uh insurance person he called me trying to you know do what they do for business i respect it i'm here for it and when we were talking he shared with me how he had just purchased a home and of course you know i'm like congratulations he's like yeah i did really good i was able to purchase um before the rates got crazy i was like bet he was like, yeah, I got in at 3%. I was like, congratulations, because, yeah, <laughs> like, who wouldn't be happy to get in at 3%? And he was like, yeah, but my experience was just bad. Like, I was sharing with him how I had gotten scammed by the tax man, and then I had a person who stole my mom's identity and blamed it on me in college. So I was just sharing with him, hey, people scam and it can get ugly. He was like, yeah, I felt scammed when I purchased. I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, guys, as you come on, if you can let me know you hear me, that's great. Um, be sure to share it with some friends because I feel like that this is a story that can help others, not just, you know, me. So he was like, yeah, I felt like I got had a little bit when I purchased my home. I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? He was like, well, you know, they told me, um, you know, they just wanted me to spend what they wanted me to spend. And I was like, hmm. And he was like, they didn't really consider, you know, what I could afford. And... I was like, they're not going to. <laughs> Their consideration is what you qualify for. It's for you to determine what you can afford. So I said, you know what? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I'm going live. <laughs> and I am going to explain to people the difference between uh, qualifications versus affordability. Because I feel like that there needs to be more of an emphasis or look, I had somebody who used to say emphasis, an emphasis on the importance of understanding the difference between what you qualify for and what your affordability is, because those are going to be two completely different numbers. Um, if you're new here, which most of you guys aren't because you're my friends, if you're on my friends list, you shouldn't be new here. But if you are, my name is Shannon Payton. I'm a realtor with EXP Realty. And today that is what we're going to delve into. So I'm actually going to take the time to explain what happens when you're qualified as far as what you should consider as well as what you need to think about when you buy a house. Because so many times I hear people who say things like, man, I want to purchase, but I'm afraid that I won't be able to afford it. Or I would like to purchase, but, you know, pricing is too high. And, you know, I can definitely understand the concern with pricing being high, but y'all know me, I'm going to be honest, but I'm, I'm saying this with compassion. Sometimes we're using it as an excuse. Sometimes we're using it as a cop-out. Shannon, what do you mean? I'm happy that you asked. What I mean is, is that pricing is going to do what pricing does. Pricing is high all over. It's, you know, interest rates are high everywhere. Buying a car, and I'm sure you're going to buy one this tax year if you need one. Um, they're high at the bank. I'm sure that didn't stop you from opening up a bank account. I mean, I'm just saying, right? So rates are high everywhere. So here's some things that I think would be beneficial. And please let me know that you can hear me before I get in too deep with this because I did have headset on before I started this and I don't want to get so far in and then you guys are like, wait, run that back because you can't hear me or because you, you didn't know. So if you can just give me a wave or whatever, that would be awesome. And I'm assuming that you guys can hear me because you're still here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Look. I appreciate you, Brandis. I've been saying your name wrong forever. You never once corrected me. I feel so bad. <laughs> so bad. So anyway, share it with a friend. Ten, five, we don't care. The goal is to grow. So when you're going to qualify for a home, okay, so first of all, usually when you're going to say, hey, I want to buy a house, in your mind you want to buy, ideally you've already pulled your credit. You already know that you have money saved. We're past, we're not talking about credit do I have the money saved? Affordability or a qualification. When you go to qualify for a loan, you're either going to go to a realtor first. Hey, if you need one, I'm here. Or you're going to go to a lender. The lender is going to ask you some preliminary questions, just as a realtor would. Hey, you know, when are you trying to buy? What are you looking for? How much are you wanting to contribute towards your home purchase? What do you want your ideal mortgage payment to be? 
when the mortgage lender does this they're going to run your credit usually if they run your credit or they collect pay stubs tax returns things of that nature they're looking to see what you can qualify for like what is your bottom line what can you get okay they're going to take into consideration and mind this mind you this when you qualify the bank decides whether or not you qualify not you okay so they're going to look at your income so they're going to want to see that you've been working for a couple years they're going to want to see that you have consistent income every month if you're paid weekly they don't care if you pay monthly they don't care if you pay PL. they don't care they just want proof legitimate proof that you have income then they're going to consider your debt to income if you don't know what debt to income is it's the amount of debt that you have compared to your income exactly like that so if you get off this call today and you're like shoot what is my debt to income if you have credit monitoring look at it underneath the summary portion it will say to you um this is what your monthly um debt payment is you take that amount and you divide it against your income and that'll give you your percentage for your debt to income now i'm not here to tell you what those percentages are but you want it below 50 percent <laughs> okay because ideally you don't want for your mortgage payment to be more than 30 percent of your income just as a benchmark okay just something to help you out with so you're going to determine your dti the dti is what's going to determine how much money you can get oftentimes i get people who are like oh um, i'm just going to increase my income to counteract having high dti or high debt to income it's easier for you to pay off a debt to increase your amount of spending than it is for you to increase your income and i say that because the economy is the way that it is so it's easier for you to pay off a debt so just even as an example, um, there's this guy that I follow on Instagram. He's called What's a Mortgage. And every day, if you're looking to know what interest rates are, if you want to know about different programs throughout wherever, he is the guy to follow. I'm not saying that there's not other people out there that you can't follow on Instagram, but What's a Mortgage is really good about giving you real life examples of what a potential mortgage payment would be based off interest, cost, location, credit score, and loan type. And I haven't really seen too many other lenders do that. Okay. So what's a mortgage? Okay. Okay. Go over there. Tell them I sent you. Maybe we can be friends. Okay. So anyway, um, once you do that, they are going to, he said, listen, it is easier for, if a person pays off $430, he gave this example. If they pay off $430 of their debt, then that can increase their spending power by $50,000. So you do the math. Is it easier for you to pay off $430 of it, you know, of a total debt payment each month? Or is it easier for you to increase your income by $50,000? I think that it makes more sense to pay off a debt load of $430, right, than it is to increase your income. So what does that look like, paying off your car? Like if you have a couple years left on your car and if you can, like, do one extra payment per year or, like, extra payment every other month you know do that because that'll increase your spending power now if you can reduce your debt and increase your income at the same time then you're in there because it's helping you on both sides okay so either one will do but if i had to say in order which one is going to be the best i would say increase your income and reduce your debt then i would say if you can't increase your income and reduce your debt then for sure reduce your debt if you can't reduce your debt then increase your income because doing those things is what's going to help you get there. Any questions? And thank you, everybody who's joining on. Please do me a solid. Again, ma'am, please, sir, share it with your friends. Um, all right. So I know sometimes it can get a little glitchy. So, But from what I can see, it's good because I'm watching it on my computer as well. All right. The last thing that you have to or be concerned with when you're thinking about qualifying is interest rates. Interest rates are going to do what interest rates do, period. Okay. This is not just a housing thing. One of my clients, she works at a car dealership. She sees it. You know, um, my husband, he works in logistics. He doesn't see it on interest rate sides, but the cost of things shipping adjusts and fluctuates. Everybody's feeling it. So this isn't like a one-off thing. It, it's going to be what it is. That doesn't mean shy away or be afraid from moving forward. It means come up with a plan because it's doable. It can be done. Okay. So. That's how qualification goes. The bank determines, just as a recap, bank determines it. They're going to take some documents from you. They're going to determine what it is. They're going to consider your income, your debt, compare the two, and then interest rates. Okay, because like I tell people, it's harder to complete compete 
with um, high interest than it is with cost of a home, okay? So, now we're looking on the affordability side. Affordability says, <clears throat> you decide what you can afford to pay. You make the decision. You know if you have to pay for daycare. You know if you have to, um, excuse me, you know if you have to have Comcast at a certain level. Because when the mortgage lender is pulling your information, they're paying attention to the information that's on your credit report. They're not paying attention to whether you have to pay daycare, whether you got to pay back your auntie, whether you're probably paying a buy here, pay here. Because those don't always report on your credit report. Payday loans don't always report on your credit report. Now, if you live in a state that doesn't allow payday loans, then great for you. Or even if you live in a state that doesn't allow title loans and things, that's awesome. But Delaware does. So with that, you have to consider those things. Um, you know, the biggest things that I find that people have to think about when they're thinking about affordability is daycare. Because if you have young children or even if you have a newborn, you're going to be paying for daycare for at least four or five years. And that doesn't count if they have to do before and after care. Okay. Um, you have... Comcast. I've heard people like when doing counseling sessions when I was focusing on credit counseling. I had people who were like, hey, I have to have Comcast because of whatever. And I can remember saying to this one guy, it's like, so you need to keep your home too. So are you, you know, your Comcast bill is like $300 a month. That's significant. It can go towards your mortgage payment instead of you spending it on Comcast. Are you going to pack your, your house up, your whole family and move on to the cable box? Because you can have Comcast and no place to live. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he was just kind of looking at me like, I can't believe you said that. But I had to because I had to because he needed to understand the severity of why it wasn't important. It wasn't important in proximity in, in relationship to him having a place to live. Um, another expense that I hear a lot that people are like, I can't do without um, is the cell phone thing. Now it's not as bad as it used to be. Like when I first got into housing and credit counseling, you know, that was in 20. 2011 2012 and back then they weren't you know straight talk wasn't a big competitor now straight talk is owned by verizon and i don't know you know before you had to have a phone plan for at least 24 months now they've made it to where the phone plan is you paying off the phone or a credit line for you to have the phone so they lock you in however they do so you have to consider do i have to continue to pay this and how long do i have to pay it most people are signing up for two to three years on that phone plan. You understand what I mean? Do we have any questions so far? Um, you can post them while I'm here. Um, another thing that you want to consider when you're deciding, what do I want to spend on my potential home? Your lifestyle. If you know that you like to travel, if you know that you like to shop, if you know that you like extracurriculars, you can read between the lines of whatever your extracurriculars might be. If you are Puff the Magic Dragon, okay, then you have to consider these things, okay? I'm not encouraging it, but I'm just keeping it real where it's at. Because the, the thing with budgeting and affordability is you have to be realistic with what your day-to-day -day lifestyle is, what your goals are. You don't want to say that you got the house and then your house poor the whole time, where you can't have furniture or you can barely have gas to get to work. Or, you know, you're losing your car because you can't continue to pay your bills or do different things like that. Because it's all cute and great to say, hey, I purchased a home, but it only really, really counts if you can stay in it, right? So you want to make sure that you run the numbers, sit down. If you're with a significant other, if you're married, if you booed up, whatever the case might be, then sit down. Like these are some things that help you sit down. If it's possible for you guys to live off of one income, do that. You don't want to put yourself in a position when you purchase anything, house, car, puppy, I don't care <laughs> what it is, where you have to both work in order for it to be okay. Because it's not always when, if something happens, it's more so when something happens. Someone might get sick. You might decide to grow your family. You might have to take care of a sick parent. You might have to take people in. You, you don't know what your life is going to do or how things will adjust. And when I was younger, I didn't think about these things until I had to run up and down the road to go visit my dad, you know, when he was going through his sickness. Well, thankfully for me, 
I already work from home, I was able to navigate that. But we had to make some adjustments. So when you're trying to purchase a home, if you can, try to get something where you can live off of one person's income. I know nobody wants to hear that, but that is the that is great advice. <laughs> okay. Another thing um, that you can do, and we kind of touched on this a little earlier, um, reduce your debt ASAP. I, I gave the example of paying down $430 a month and your debt load can increase your purchasing power by $50,000, okay? So that's always something you can do. Um, another thing I wanted to um, talk about, and I'm not a lender, but um, I was on a call and a lot more uh, brokerages are offering programs like this. I'm not sure if banks are. And when we say brokerages, what a brokerage is, is you might go somewhere and they're kind of like a one-stop. So you go in and they might represent um, or have relationships with like five different lenders. So they can run you through five different lenders. That's what a brokerage will do. When you're working with a direct lender, they represent that bank. So more of a direct lender would be someone like Bank of America, where a brokerage um, might be um, ABC Mortgage Company because they're running different partnerships with different banks to get you qualified. Okay. Some of them offer something that they call a buy down. You might hear it as a 3 2 1 program. You might hear it as a 2 1 program. So essentially, what that'll do is, is if interest rates are high <laughs> at any given time, um, let's say interest rates are 6% and I qualify for this buy down program. What the buy down program says is that the first year, my mortgage rate will be reduced by 3% and I'll pay a 3% interest rate. Then my second year into owning my home, they'll add one more percent. So then I'll pay my mortgage payment at a 4% interest rate. And then the last year, I will pay it at a 5% interest rate. So it's like a graduated interest thing. So it introduces you to what your actual mortgage payment would be at a 6% interest rate. Now, ultimately, if you do buy right now, the market is going to always do this. That's just a natural movement. It fluxes. It moves up and down. So even if you purchase now, let's say you do a 3 2 one program. If you do a 3 2 one program, interest rates could be down. Refinance. Keep your credit good. Keep paying your mortgage payment on time. Don't go beyond your means. And just refinance when you can. You know how many people refinance when interest rate was like 2%? It was crazy. It was crazy. I remember I saw a house that was like $600,000 and they refinanced to like a 2% interest rate. And their mortgage payment was like $3,000 or $2,900. It was something stupid. And I was just in shock. I did the math yesterday for a house that's $350,000 with a 3.5% down payment and 7%. The mortgage payment was like $2,900. And that was being a something with high numbers. Um, if you need a way to see how much could it potentially be um, for me to purchase a home, I do have a mortgage calculator on my website. Go on there, play with it. Um, it's one of the links here. It's the one that says shannonpayton.exprealty.com. And it'll say at the top, mortgage calculator. You can plug in any number that you want. You don't have to do anything special to go there other than to click and go to the website and give it a look. So anyway, I hope that this information that I have shared with you guys today has been good that it's something that can help you with deciding uh, the difference between what I qualify for and what my affordability is. Remember, qualification is what the bank decides. Affordability is what you decide. If you feel like that you're moving through a process, whether you're listing your home or purchasing a home, and you're feeling like you're pressured to spend um, a specific amount, because realistically, there are some people who you know might say things to try to push, push it, and you don't feel comfortable because you feel like they're forcing you to spend more, say so open up, tell them they work for you. You don't work for them. They work for you. Okay. If you don't, you know, if you're looking for an agent that you can trust somebody who can walk you through the process and that's going to educate you along the way, because that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be ethical and I'm going to educate you. Then, Hey, I'm the lady for the job. My name is Shannon Payton with ESP Realty. It is um, my purpose and my goal to educate you on your finances and to provide uh, residential real estate services to you so that you can buy or sell your home. Uh, share this with a friend, anyone in need, feel free to inbox me with any questions you might have or text me. That is my phone number. It does come to me. And if you would like more notifications about when I go live, then you can text the word L-I-V-E to 302-330-2572. Hopefully, again, you guys got what you needed from this, but I've got dinner cooking. So if you are watching this hashtag replay and thank you so much.